sorry we're a little bit late. We were contributing to the local economy down to the uh, cookhouse. <laughs> so my name is uh, Mike Gabbard. I'm the state senator from the west side of Oahu, Kapolei, Mahakilo. And I'm the chair of the Energy Environment Committee. And I'd like to introduce uh, your senator, Kalani English. And also this is Representative Denny Kaufman from Kona side of the Big Island. And also this is Susan Kodani, who's the district director for Congresswoman Maisie Hirono. So thank you for having us. <clears throat> we come to listen. Uh, if you saw the article in the paper, as you know, there are some big wind projects that are being proposed for the uh, Molokai and also for the Nai. And we had a big hearing this last January on these projects at the Capitol. And after, actually before it started, one of the guys from the Nai said, why are you having this hearing on and I said, good question. So I said, we're coming. So we're here. Um, we are here to listen. And so the format will be this. Uh, we're just going to, I'm going to have uh, Senator English Rep. Kaufman say a few things if they'd like. And then just raise your hand. We'd like, if you'd like to give us your name, that's fine. If not, that's fine as well. Uh, we ask that you be respectful of others' opinions if they are different from yours. And we will take this information back with us as our session starts in mid-January as we deliberate over these <coughs> very important bills. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Um, you know, I really just want to say thank you to Mike and to uh, Jenny for <coughs> wanting to come to Molokai because uh, when, when we talked about this in Honolulu, we said, you know, a formal hearing is not really not the best way to get um, understanding. So we thought this talk story and a listening session would be probably more beneficial for us and for you. So um, it's a little bit unique in the way that we operate, but I think it's going to be very successful for us. Um, and you know, know that uh, the administration has one point of view, and we have another. So don't confuse us with the governor. Uh, he has one point, and you know we're the, the check and the balance in the system too. So that's why we're here to we not made up our minds on it, uh, like the government is. Um, thank you. Yeah, I just want to thank all of you for taking time out of your day and sharing. Thank you for being here. She's welcome to listen to you. Oh, I just want to bring greetings from the Congresswoman. I'm so happy that Senator Gabbard uh, invited me to come along, or I, I invited myself to come along. <laughs> It's very important. We've been monitoring um, all these issues on the federal level from afar, and it was important for us to actually hear from all of you, just like it is with state senate, the legislature. It's certainly important for the federal government. So I thank you for being here today. Okay, and the way we'll start is uh, we'll have oh, we have one guy's got to go back to work, yeah. <laughs> and after him, we would like those who are not at. Uh, Previous one that we had at Mauna Loa can go first, and those of you that I know were Mauna Loa that you didn't get a chance to speak, will have an opportunity this time. Around, okay? Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, mahalo for coming. I appreciate you guys taking the time and coming out here. Um, my name is Matthew Hamill. Um, I'm a resident here. I grew up actually in Holy War in Pukapele, the very end of Pukapele. Um, just to give you a little background about who I am, so that you can understand my position. That's why I oppose the Big Win Project but I believe in sustainable energy. Um, I grew up here, went to Molokai High School, left, went to California, and lived there for 12 years. Um, I drove to Palm, Palm Spring and Palm Desert, and I've seen all the big windmills up there. Um, I see what it looks like, and it hurts to know that that could be a possibility here on Molokai. Um, I have four kids that I chose to bring back to race here on Molokai. And I want them to have the same experience that I've had living here. Um, growing up at Pukapele, being able to be a mile away or less than the ocean and, and gathering our food right down there and being able to access those areas without, um, without a no trespassing sign or something like that where wind turbines would be up there. Um, I have solar energy at my house, which helps cut, cut costs. Um, I use propane and some of those things to help cut costs here on Mokai. 
And um, so basically, I want my kids to have the same experience that I've had. Being able to access the different areas here on Molokai without a no trespassing sign or wind turbines, defamating or, or uh, creating an eyesore here on Molokai as well. Um, the other big thing, obviously, is keeping Molokai itself and not changing. And that's what we're known for. And that's, that's why we're so special. So that's all I wanted to say. And, and mahalo for your time. And I appreciate you allowing me to go first. Hello. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Who's next? Uh, I can go next. I actually have a prepared speech, so okay. I, I, I've been working on it. Um, I want to start out by saying I lived in California for about 38 years. We moved here two years ago. And whether or not I'm a resident, I love land, and I love the trees, and I love the environment. So um, I used to work in Hollywood and I would drive back and forth and I like rats, all those big wind turbines and a lot of people say, well, they're like toothpicks and they're hardly turning, they don't do anything. Um, I really thought they were kind of cool. They looked like airplanes when I first saw them. You know, the, 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 the turbines look like uh, Boeing uh, wings. So I started researching wind power with a pretty open mind. And the more I researched and looked at it, the more I think we need to oppose it. Because um, the turbines operate 30% of the time. Uh, and they do not reduce carbon emissions. And our wilderness areas are disappearing all over the land. We, um, our wildlife will disappear here too, as it has in other areas across the US when these turbines go in. The U.S. Navy has done research to show that the low throb that develops from the thrum that can be heard half mile to a mile and a half away will affect the whales that are dear to all our hearts. Um, to call this wind farm a farm is a misnomer. Corporations have co-opted co words like green energy to make the public believe they're doing the right thing. In this day and age, when we have more and more corporate mergers, and our institutions are getting larger and larger and more powerful, it is becoming more and more difficult to hold people accountable for the promises they make to the communities that they invade. Even some of our liberal institutions that are grassroots organizations are becoming less accountable to the little people that fund them. We cannot put away the public any longer. The internet, as evidenced by what is happening today, and the fact that we're going after Wall Street across the nation. Um, the internet has to some degree changed all of this because all of us can gain access to the information. We are all able to inform ourselves. Everywhere across the country, cities <coughs> are coming together to oppose the large-scale projects, wind farms, natural glass, fractaling, etc., that is destroying the land. And we will, in Molokai, put up a legal fight. Make no mistake about that. Molokai will fight to hold this kind of development at bay, as I would in any other part of the country because I love land in general. I cannot profess to love it like some of you who have lived here for generations, but I do love land. People come to Hawaii to see natural beauty, the migrating whales, and our pristine ridge lines. We don't want massive towers. Go to the internet, and you can see how the ridge lines are destroyed and flattened in Maine, in Vermont, in every part of the country they're being destroyed. Industrial wind generators are not green, except for the millions of dollars that we, the taxpayers, will give to, and notice the word give. We will be giving this money away to the corporations. This is corporate welfare and is a worse scam than the mortgage scam. I believe that the right kind of subsidies for alternate energy are the kind that is given to individuals so we can each put up solar or even a small wind generator on small individual scales. Decentralized small scale wind and solar power is the way to go and I emphatically say no to any form of large industry in Molokai. I thank you very much for your time. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Rosani Ash. 
R O S H A N I, and my last name is Nash, N A S H. Thank you. If you would please say your name before you start, then we can yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Michelle. Who's next? <laughs> All right. Um, I'm Cheryl Pritchard again. I, I, I'm. I just can't wrap my head around the public being held to pay for a billion dollar infrastructure that a private company will own and profit by. Um, and to reiterate and back up for Shawnee, there, there's an economy by scale by size, and there's an economy by scale by number. And Germany is decoupling 17 nuclear power plants, and they go, they have a plan for economy of scale by number, not by size. And to back up the woman in Mauna Loa, just make it illegal to sell inefficient light bulbs in the state. How about painting the roofs white? That would put a lot of people to work. If I had a billion dollars to spend, there's a lot of simpler ways. There's a lot of people in Molokai that would like to tie to the grid. And it's full. So how about we spend the money to be able to tie to the grid here? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. I'd like to say a few words. And again, thank you all for coming. <coughs> My name is John Worden. I've lived here on the island for 10 years now. I'm, um, my educational background is one of a master's degree in aerospace engineering, and I've studied things like windmills in my career. And I'm really uh, behind the idea of alternate energy, but I have to oppose this project because there are going to be a lot of uh, changes here on the island in terms of the environmental impact and the cultural impact, which has nothing to do with the power generation. We have the power generation the power generated is all going to be exported over to Oahu. There will be no, none of that power will be uh, utilized here on the island. <coughs> now, the efficiency of these, uh, of the windmills, from the theoretical point of view, you know, the maximum efficiency you can have under the best conditions is 0.593, called the BETS limit, B-E-T-Z. And that comes from uh, a book which I have uh, Flower Airfoil and Airfoil Air Screw Theory, uh, copyrighted 1926. So this technology has been around for a long time. So 40% of the energy in the wind simply isn't even available to us. Uh, by way of comparison, hydrogen has the highest heating value at 63,000 BTUs per pound, and by comparison for the wind is like 0.03 BTUs per pound. So we end up having to have something really, really big to, to intercept the wind in order to get anything out of it you know, whatsoever. So my other issue is the end of life. And uh, Mr. Kaufman from the Big Island, I'm sure you're aware of the windmills on South Point. And my concern is after these windmills, if they're installed, it could wind up like that, a graveyard of windows. Rusted, broken, and no money to take it down and take care of it. <laughs> and we don't want to have that kind of eyesore here. Thank you. about the impact of the sea cable and where it was going. 
and the impact that it's going to have on our aquifer and on our land. My parents were in Vermont. We've experienced what's happened to the aquifer in Vermont. It's destroyed. We have a very fragile infrastructure here, you know, with the basaltic ground and so forth. The putting the windmill on that will completely destroy it in a way that it will never be able to regain the potential to hold the, the water into the land. It's just absolutely wanton greed that's driving this. And I think that, you know, for those of us who have heard on the coconut wireless about phase one, phase two, phase three, we are extremely upset. We're extremely upset. And reading the Senate bill, I'm extremely upset that we're going to be taxed for putting in this project that has nothing to do with renewable energy here. We are committed to renewable energy. We are not committed to diesel turbines on the end of a wind generator that is very inefficient. Thank you. Generation home and home still here on both sides, born and raised on both sides. Part time farm. I live on my home still with my family and my whole Puna. Um, I'm here to represent the RC and I only time here on both sides. We, we oppose uh, this, this project and we feel that it's, it's unnecessary to ruin our lifestyle here on both sides uh, for someone else's betterment. Uh, we feel that you know that the money is should be here on Molokai to kind of help us with our electric bills and our utilities here. Uh, being that we have one of the most highest electric rates, uh, gasoline rates, food rates throughout the state. We, we feel that attention should be brought to, to these matters and we believe in sustainable, renewable energy here upon the island. Like everyone else mentioned, uh, solar, uh, solar panels, solar farms in our, in our lots here on our home sites uh, to, to help us on our, on our island here. Um, I, I feel that we shouldn't be helping other people trying to get their energy from, from our sacrifice. And um, I'd like to ask everyone for my for, forgiveness if I undo anybody by saying these words, but wow. Well, And 
I really object to the taxpayers guaranteeing if this is private enterprise and it's a private thing, let them put the money for it. If they can see it in the business plan, that makes sense. But to put it on the back of the taxpayers, especially in these days when you can look from Europe to here, that these actions have gotten the economy where it's about to crash everything. We can't afford it. So I see little gain for Moenti and a lot of risk, and not only for Moenti, but the entire state. And I'd also like to say, I was in the library yesterday, and there's no EIS study available, and they call it a programmatic EIS statement or something like that. And to me, this, so much talk about this, I think it's a problem at the EIS. I don't want to see what, you know, if this does get rammed down the throat, we're going to make sure and fight it every step of the way and make damn sure that they do a good job with it, which I'm not convincing. Our lands here are highly eroded. They're compromised already from overgrazing for the last 200 years. Coming down from Mauna Loa, did you folks see on the left-hand side, just before you get to the flat, did you see the big erosions there? Can you imagine putting roads and cables across that type of land? When you factor in the cost to do it correctly, I think you'll find that it costs more to do it here on Mauna Loa and ship the power there than it is to make them do it on Mauna that billion dollars, it just doesn't make sense. And it's probably two or three by the time you make it big enough to really do the job. Um, I think it'd be far better spent on people's rooftops and the communities that it serves. So, thanks for coming.
lived for about 12 years on the Big Island before that. So having lived on the Big Island, of course I've been to South Point many times and seen the horrendous eyesore at South Point. Um, I have a few different pieces and I've heard some of the things that I have to say already expressed. Um, but one of the things that I haven't heard yet is the fact that my sister said it just a minute ago. You know, if the barge stopped tomorrow, Molokai is not going to die. Molokai is going to hunt and going to fish and going to farm and we're all going to trade and we're all going to take care of each other. We're not asking for a Wahoo to bail us out or an Ali to bail us out or the Big Island or anybody. A Wahoo has overbuilt for what they can sustain. Hello? They can't even take care of their own Opala. They have to send it to the mainland, which I understand now it's just piling up over there. This is just a perfect example of not wanting to shit in your own nest, but perfectly willing to go over there and do it in your neighbors. Oahu needs to take care of themselves. The billions of dollars that this would take to implement is better spent over there. Over there, you can have all the windmills you like. You don't have to put in a billion some dollar cable. You're going to save all that money. And you're going to pay for your own greed, not you gentlemen, but in general, the, the, the whole system, from your own backyard. And that is how it should be. It's not, you know, Hawaiians are very uh, known for sharing, for being ohana and that. But this is unfair beyond belief that Oahu thinks they can come to the poorest, smallest two islands, Lanai and Molokai, and take, and not even offer to give some benefit. Now, I've heard him say, oh, it's going to be benefit because it's going to make jobs while we're building it. That's not going to happen. We, we know that already. If the project's going to take a long time, they're going to destroy our roads, just driving stuff out there. They're probably going to have to re-dredge out here to get the barges in that are going to hold that heavy kind of stuff. All stuff that we don't want done here, because we like it the way it is. They're going to absolutely decimate the area where they're going to put it. And I've, I've, from what I read in the newspapers um, and heard from other people, this project, they say the windmills are uh, feasible to create energy for 20 years. How can you justify 20 years of Manini kind of wind power, as, as John explained, and do so much destruction to another island? It, it, it's so wrong on so many levels. And if you were here, and you lived here, and you had fought to keep Molokai Molokai for so long, and Oahu was trying to do this to you, you would be standing here too. And Oahu needs to understand that. They need to take care of themselves. Or they need to stop growth. In California, where I used to live, all of the streams and rivers that come down out of the mountains with the rainfall, and feed into the San Joaquin River Valley. Years and years ago, there was a politician who took some payoffs and arranged for all of the water rights, for all of that water, to be sold to Southern California. So now, Northern California and, and, and Central California doesn't own their own water. It's, it's bad business all the way around. And it's, it's not right, and it can't happen here. Thank you. Aloha. Nice to see all of you here. So I need to share that all these things that's coming up, really, it's not for us. It's because of greed. Greed. God's word says that. Greed has set in 
and this is why. It's so miserable. It makes it miserable for us. And for me, the windmills has nothing to do if you don't want a cable. Yeah. The cable is the problem. Because the cable has to go under our reefs, go to the ocean, get over to Honolulu. What is Honolulu doing for themselves? On Molokai, we already started about 10 years now. Paper bags, flat, all the, all the stuff that is supposed to save energy, we already in there. We do it because we care. We do it because we know what's going to happen to us. Do everybody know the same message? No. Because if you first give them the message, then they would know how to take care. And I need to say this because 20 years, they're talking about 20 years for this windmill. 20 years of all the destruction they're going to give back. If you look all around the islands that they have windmills, it doesn't produce electric. I started to read up on them. And you know what, brother? There's nothing that they're gonna do that would be better for us, neither for Honolulu. For because I think we will not generate. If God don't give us wind, I don't have to go get something to work. So for me, it's the wind, the, um, the cable, all that is so important to us because you're gonna have to rip up our reefs for one thing. Another thing is going in the ocean. Read up how many times the cables broke. Mm -hmm. You see, inside there I read it and I said, wow. You, know, you, you mean to say we're going to risk our life for electricity to go there? Let them, if everybody do this share, put up a solar on each other's, on mm -hmm. each roof. I mean, you guys got to tell them how to take care of themselves. They don't know how. Yeah. Leave us alone. For us in Amolokai, because we raise our family here, we know the hardship. We know the hardship. We know all our lifestyle. And so to share with everybody, we need to let them know that what they have, we don't need. What we have, we don't like give. And only because it's unnecessary to give them something that would leave us out and ruin our lifestyle. And I, I you know, I hope Robert, I remember you from the beginning when I came in. And that you would take the message. Kalani, take the message. You guys are here for here? That means you guys gotta do something about it. We're not over here for you guys here and we do nothing. The thing is, it's our lives. We live here. All of us over here live here. We love what God has blessed us with. Amen. Let them know the message. Every house should have a law. Pull up, solar up. Yeah. I have solar. Why? Because I know the hardship is coming. So if everybody is ready to do their share there, I mean every household, do it. You're not gonna need us to furnish that over there. So I need to share that with you guys because you guys there are almost a million people over there. We only get 7,000. We sink in there. But what are they doing? What are you first trying to say to them so that they know they make the laws for us, they make the rules? But when it comes down to life, this is more important that this come out. That everybody take the responsibility as a homeowner and as a parent and whatever. But get it on where they got to be the one to seek for their own. Because over here, we got everything that is high. I tell you, people come away, they don't can leave. They don't can leave. They moan and groan and groan and moan because it costs too much money. But we over here, no matter what the circumstances, we'll stand for each other, we'll go and see how we can help, and do everything that we can do to meet the needs. So I need to let you guys go. I want to I wanna answer. I want you guys to do something, say something to us because we sat here so you guys can hear me. So we like to see what you guys are gonna do for us. Write it up so we all know. And that's what I request, that you first do that, write for it, because we are the people that put you guys in place. It is the people that you first supposed to be working for. So I really, really am happy for us here. And at the same time, I want to see that something get done. Because if we don't like it, they don't live here, then that means, you know what? 
no need. And I know how terrible that things are. I went to the mainland and I heard this boom, boom, boom. I took my daughter. What's wrong? I said, something is making noise. She said, oh, mom, we need to turn the corner. Then you could see them. Turn the corner was nothing but Williams. Why are we going to get there? Woo, woo, woo. Let me get peace and quiet away. <laughs> I mean, we're not asking for nothing that will ruin our life. And you know what? We are setting up our life for our children and the generation to come. It's not for us anymore. It is for them. So I need to share that with you folks. I really love you guys. But I need to say that it was a good place to help us listen and do something. Mahalo. that Oahu put uh, solar on the roofs over there, then what you're doing, what they're going to try to do here, they're not going to get away with it, though. I'm nervous, so may I sit with you? Please. <laughs> Please. Please. <laughs> My name is Margaret Keahi Leary. I'm known here as Peggy. Um, I'm, I was born and raised here, graduated from Molokai High School. Went into the military right after for a little while, and then um, did some time in, on the East Coast, and then moved back to Honolulu to secure a job. So I married to a man that is strictly against being hooked up to the power line. We're on alternate energy. We have we either have um, a windmill and uh, solar panels to generate for our house. So it's just the two of us. Um, my husband has always been interested in the wind uh, turbines, not turbines, but his his interest was in the Savonius type of um, windmill, which. He thought perhaps he could get Molokai's people to utilize something like that in their own backyard to make energy for their homes. But um, it didn't take off the ground. However, the um, information that we gained from him setting up and trials, like you need at least 12 miles per hour wind to turn, that is only a small one. So um, the wind doesn't blow the majority of the time. And when the big turbines sit, it has to be kept going. So you got to feed the power into it to keep that thing going, which doesn't make any sense. And um, I saw on TV on the educational program when they were moving this big windmill from one state to another state, and it required extending the trailers, widening the road, they have to watch for power lines and all of that stuff to be able to get this thing to its destination, which I believe was in Texas. Now, we don't have the kind of roads to hold out such heavy loads. Our streets are very small. And um, having lived, moved back to Molokai in 1991, um, I saw, I mean, I enjoyed life. We had a wonderful time. Uh, we were a very close community. We enjoyed, you know, one another. And, um, but of course, when progress comes, so they say progress, it's really, not progress at all, because I agree with Sister and all the others that share it. I too am against those big uh, windmills. I was in the Philippines a few months back, and they had about 19 of those along the beach. About, not all of them was at working, and I don't know when it was put up. So um, they do have them in the Philippines. How it's helping out over there, I don't know. But I am in agreement that to do that to our island would devastate us 
And like everybody has shared, if, any, if Oahu would take care of themselves and see how they can improve, then we don't have to bear the burden for, for them. And I'm in agreement that solar is really one of those alternate energies that can really help a great deal. And, um, but there is a story that I want to share which has nothing to do with us here, but this story comes from the Bible. It is the story about Jezebel and Ahab. King Ahab wanted to secure this little vineyard that was adjacent to his property. He went to see the man whose name was Neighbor and asked if he could purchase the land. The man said no. So he went home hanging his lip and he told his wife Jezebel that, um, you know, he wanted this little vineyard. And she said, oh, I'll get it for you. So what they did was, they trumped up a story against the man, and the man was killed. And they moved in and took the vineyard. In the story of Lilio Kalanish, she made a statement. And she said, why would somebody come in and take what little vineyard there is when there is lots of land around? And again, you know, and this is the exact same thing that is happening. Where is this little vineyard? Why would they want to come in and destroy the vineyard? We're not asking for anything. We're just saying that if they took care of their problems, then we will be able to continue with our lifestyle here. We're not asking them for anything. You know. I like all of them have shared, they come from, from the states and from different areas and they saw how when they first started out that it was beautiful, you know, everybody's a small community, you know, the relationship was good. But then pretty soon, there's so many people, nobody knows the next door neighbor anymore. Many tourists have come through to Molokai, and I always ask them, why do you come to Molokai? And they said, because there is something special about this place. You, I said, you look around, there isn't anything that, what is so special about Molokai? Because of our lifestyle. They can enjoy the freedom of driving and, and enjoying the scenery. They don't have to be in a hurry. And many of them return year after year after year just to come to Molokai to have some quiet time. So as a local person, I appreciate Molokai more than I have ever. When I was young, I didn't really think much about the island until I left home for a little bit. And I realized how much we have on here that money can never buy. So with that story, I just want to say that uh, <laughs> the shirts that we wear, the I am Molokai, I know the I am of the Bible. I am a Christian, and I believe that this land belongs to Jesus, and I declare this land to belong to Jesus Christ. And we, as a people, gather together. Our hearts is in one accord to keep this place the way how it should be, and to be enjoyed by our next generation. So 
So thank you. Growing up, my dad was a farmer, a fisherman. My papa Inoka was a fisherman, or a farmer. And my dad always told us to plant stuff on the land that can feed you. So when you no more money for buy food, you can go eat off your trees or your vegetables or whatever you plant. And to me, I say no for the windmills because it's not planting. And when you plant them, what you're going to be left with is Ohana. So, that's mine. Because Molokai, Molokai is lifestyle and it's people, like Margaret said, it's priceless. I want to say, my name is Frank Gonzalez, and uh, I moved here four years ago when I purchased a piece of property in the home about three years ago in Coming Low Law. Uh, I look at the safety part of aircrafts where they want to put these windmills which can cause a glitch. And I used to fly before to you, and it caused the panel for seconds to black out. The pilot didn't know where they hit it for. And also, if it's the sun, the sun flickers, it's a, you can't see it behind you. So, directly as they're coming into Bolivar Airport, if that happens, you don't know what's going to happen. Okay. Also, the next one is I'm concerned about the reef. I'm a Kamu Pavel. I've been paddling for many years, from nine years old, and right now I'm 71 years old. Okay? If they bring this barges in with a canoe, how is that? Where well, are they gonna put all these canoes? Okay? And what's gonna happen to what we have, the last Hawaiian type of spot for the cake is to follow in the future. Okay? So if we look at that not only for ourselves in this generation, we're looking at for the next generation, which I have two grandsons. When I came here the first time, I fell in love with this place because I remember John Kumi Kawa told me on the aircraft that was coming over. And he looked at me because he needed help. He was kind of a big man and he put another strap on and helped him out. Okay? And he says, Thank you very much. He says, When are you coming home? Because he was meant to predict the future. Okay? The future was the real thing because now I'm living here. Yeah, in four years, but I've been here for 30 years, coming back and forth, and involved with Kamu Paddling, and I used to fly here to before, way back, okay? And also to Maui, in Hana, okay? My family generated from, from the Big Island, which you mentioned from Kohala, Pai Pai Ko, all over the island, you know? So, I can see the windmills on certain islands, like Big Island, you just did. You don't need that here. Who's gonna clean up this mess? Yeah? Nobody's going to be a good mess. It's going to be just like the film that we've seen, the IAM, Molokai. There's beat, 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 making a lot of noise. Also, when I was a young boy, to again, Pukukia, the Boy Scout. We used to camp up there in Kalugu. I don't know how many miles away from where we could hear this zhu, zhu, zhu all night. But I thought it to what I heard that that affects your bones because of the deep penetration of your body system. Okay, we're gonna have a health problem. So why do we need all these problems here when this island is so small with all these luminous coming in and so much weight? Okay, a lot of weight. And we need on this island here, we need on shelves. And it might tilt, it might crush what you have on the other side of the island, and down already on the other side. Okay, it might happen here. What's gonna happen to us? And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Back, I ended up backpacking all the islands. 
Homestead, I've been on the homestead since I was yeah, born. Yeah, yeah, 52 years I've been born on the homestead. Your name, sir? Oh, sorry. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, my half, yeah, four, yeah, I had generations on the homestead. Uh, you know what? My yeah, grandpa, my father, those guys fight so much issues already. You know what? These guys, these um, we new guys, all they come in for is the money. And all the other guys we fight was all for money. They come, they try to make their money, and then the guys went. Everything they had all still on the island. They get the hotel down there for what? For nothing. The hotel they they fill them up, and what happened? They need a hotel. Now what get inside they get rats running all around. Okay, they can bring this windmill. No, in fact, no, the guy's not gonna bring this windmill. As far as we can help it, the guy's not going to come. And we're asking you guys to help us. Please, just help us guys. Don't bring this in here, because that's not right, man. Us guys live without them. We don't need them. I mean, it, that not going to give us nothing. Us guys not going to get nothing out of there. I think all going to Honolulu. You know what? Honolulu is getting up himself. But you can like put up windows, go on Hawaii Kai. Put up something in Hawaii Kai. Uh, if you guys put Hawaii Kai and look at the guys in Hawaii Kai, see what they going to say. They're going to brown for But yeah, as for Hanulo, so the guys ain't supposed to brown because as for them, this windmill is not for us. As for these big companies for make money. And as guys, we're not into that. If I was into money, I wouldn't be on this island. I would have to go off island. Because if, if you like get rich, this not one island for get rich. Because us guys, we can live the way we are. We don't need that kind of stuff. If things, if things go bad in Honolulu, well, that's Honolulu. You know, so, hey, please, I mean, I just telling you guys, you know, we are, we are against this all the way, okay? that are out on the West End. Nobody's going to have the money to do that. They're just going to be rusted metal trees out there because they can't last. Everybody knows that. What about South Point on the Big Island? You've seen those uh, down there. I mean, this whole thing is, is stupid uh, because of the end result. But in the, in the, in the meantime, we're going to take the ground cover what little there is west, and we're gonna we're gonna remove it. We're gonna dig monster fit footings for these things. All of that's gonna hit the air. It's going onto the reefs, either in the wind or in the rain, in the runoff. Nobody owns the reefs. Not Clark and Cook, not Pattern Energy, not Molokai uh, Ranch, or what used to be. None. Nobody owns the reefs. Those are those are gonna be silted. 
the big, you know, the harbor, the, the thing that's going to have the harbor, that's, um, that's going to create uh, who knows what. I mean, I can't even say I know what's going to happen. The, the cable, you know, drilling the reef on that side, is it going to go into Holly Alondo? Where is this going to go? Is it gonna go? The, the West Beaches are, are the most beautiful beaches, are, to my mind, on the island. And where is it going? Cabaquillo or something like that? You know, drilling the... What, what's going to happen to the, to the seal populations that hang around? There are more of them on Molokai anywhere else, according to the seal count. The, the migrating bird populations can be cut to pieces by those things that they don't know anything about. The, the night sky is going to be lighted by these monsters. Forget the dark, silent, starry Molokai night that's going to be light pollution. And, and, and I understand that some other places in the islands may not appreciate that because they are not polluted. But it's, it's, it's beautiful. And it's going to create a lot of light at night. It's a, and, and a lot of humming noise and all this is not necessary. Plus, which, like you said, there's really a problem with aviation. There's at least two problems with aviation. One is, what, what is this going to do to, to landing patterns? What is it going to do to wind shear? What, what's it going to do to the electrical um, fields that this is going to produce? Um, plus, there's a beacon on the west end already that's part of the international grid for overflying the, the uh, Pacific. That was put there because it's silent, because there's no interference of electrical. So I'm not sure that that is still going to operate like it's supposed to. Uh, and so what's going to happen then? Is that beacon going to have to be moved to another island? Where? You know, Lanai? What, how, how's that going to work? Uh, the, I think that the other people need to come into this pilots association the, and the uh, National Aeronautics Association need to come in and look at some of these uh, issues besides the pollution issues, besides the reef, besides the beaches. Uh, and and the, so the sorry thing about it, the sad thing about it, is we know for a fact we're going to be here 15 years from now trying to find the money to deal with the rusted walks like they got on South Point. And it's going to cost a fortune, and it's going to rape the land, and there's no point in it. Absolutely. So thank you all. That, that reef out there is the second most pristine reef in the world. And they're going to just, out of greed, are going to destroy it. My name is Ehuda Nikani, and I live on Hawaii. Um, although I'm not born and raised on the island, my grandparents are from Hawaii, but my great grandparents and my grandparents are from Hawaii Valley. Um, I think that you've heard, I am absolutely unequivocally opposed to the wind project. Um, you've heard lots of people saying lots of things, and you're going to hear more in the next few hours when you go to town. You've heard several from people in Mama Law. Um, to me, it's really obvious that this project is not about an environmental concern or caring for our island or caring for our community or caring for our people. Um, it has everything to do with corporate greed and um, not feeding our island, but feeding um, the pockets of huge corporations. Um, I speak for my kupuna. I speak for people in our community. I speak for the generations to come. Um, I think of our kupuna looking down on us and seeing what's going on and what goes on over and over again. And I see them shaking their heads and saying, shame on you guys. I do not envy you gentlemen in the position that you're in because you you do take back our manapa. 
And what appalls me over and over again is how little regard is given to the intelligence and the expertise and the heart of the people in this community for generations and generations and generations. And I just ask you folks to do your job. Please, do your job and be our representatives. Thank you so much for coming.
what the impacts were. I don't know if the document was in the thousands of pages, but it was um, really not explained to this community. So when you have an open period to respond, you cannot give really an intelligent response to such a large, complex project. I think people in this room, we don't understand decoupling, curtailment. If you have several islands providing energy via the undersea cable, um, the decision on who's going to get curtailed and uh, how the PUC comes in with decoupling, it's very complex. And we cannot wrap our hands around it. So we look to you, Senator English, because you've been dealing with energy for and Representative Hoffman and Chair. Uh, to just help us, keep us informed, maybe by via through Kalani's newsletter or maybe for continuing uh, briefings to this community. But I think you already get the message, and I think the state has a message, and our governor has a message. Mm -hmm. Well, Laurie, uh, it's a good, good time to tell you about our. our We've upgraded the website uh, from Steve for the legislature. So if you go to uh, hawaii.capital.gov, oh, it's capital. 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 Oh, capital. Capital. Sorry, okay, I'm dyslexic. So it's, <laughs> what is it? Capital.hawaii.gov. Okay, I'm seeing it now. Um, if you go to that website, we just did some improvements in the last couple of weeks. But the newest one is, um, you could always, all the information has always been there. So every piece of testimony, every uh, hearing notice, you know, everything that people submit has always been there. And it's always, we've put it online for years. But we added a new piece which allows you to track it so that you can now go and put in the bill number, which is Senate Bill, what is it? Senate Bill, Senate Bill 367, SB 367. And it'll send you emails anytime It'll automatically send you an email saying, okay, there's a hearing coming up. Um, when we post stuff, in other words, somebody submits testimony, which you can now through the system, um, we don't get it at the same time. So we don't get it before or anything. It all goes online. The senators and the public gets it all at the same time. Oh, so, okay. you know, it's a new thing, but it's instant. So the minute we get something, it's the same time you get it. Um, and it sends you notifications now. So it's a real good way to keep on the information because it's a huge amount of stuff. And you know what, I'm really right about understanding the terminology. I mean, I've been dealing with energy for about 15 years and I'm still learning every day. It's like, what is that term and what does it mean? Um, and let me think about how to help people understand it because you reach a point when, you know, we talk about um, wheeling and decoupling and curtailment and you think everybody understands it. But you know, you're really right on that. So I don't even think the PUC commissioners understand. I want to Well, Laura, let me add something to what the Senator Inker said, and that's on the programmatic EIS, the environmental impact statement. I just met um, with the Energy Office the other day, and they're going to restart their hearings, what they're calling scoping meetings. Right. They're going to be coming back in the first quarter of 2012 because they've expanded it. The first series that they ran, that they came out here, was just on wind. So now that that's changed, they're adding solar and geothermal, and they want to come back and, again, listen to hear what your thoughts and concerns, if you were to add those, the impacts that that would have on all the islands. And one thing I want to ask you to consider is this concept, and that is that <clears throat> being a, an island state, the concept of cables connecting the islands with geothermal from the Big Island, let's say, obviously there's no support for wind projects here, but for example, um, on Oahu, uh, a developer is proposing 300 megawatts of solar near Pearl Harbor. And that's, uh, but the, I, the concept is of making, linking the islands by cable, and then levelizing the electric rates so that you are not, so that what you are paying here is the same thing that people on a lot will pay. In other words, we share the energy resources. 
and we pay the same rates. This is a concept that I'm just asking you to consider. We're almost out of time, but uh, go ahead. Right. How to get the electricity into our homes. Why put cables in the ocean? Let me, let me it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's money making. Last, That's what it's what As it I means. mentioned at the last meeting, there are 267,000 single family dwelling homes in Hawaii. Only 5,000 have TV panels up on the roof. Not solar water here, I'm talking about PV systems. And one of the things that we're trying to do, the biggest obstacle to getting that PV system up on your roof is what? The cost, right? They cost around 40, 30 to 40,000. So with the tax credits, the federal tax credits, the state tax credits, you can get that down to about 16,000. So one of the bills that we introduced this last time is called on-bill financing. Unfortunately, it didn't pass. It's, uh, there's just a, a working group that's studying it, where you would be able to pay for that upfront cost to get that system on your roof and pay for it on your monthly electric bill. Right. But I heard on the radio there was something. Yes. So, so that I mean, it's not like, and, and there's yes. another. Uh, it's been through a number. Yeah. Well, that concept has been around for a number of years. Right. You just never get it through. Right. Well, then, well, then why are we talking about cable? Why are we talking okay. about the other We, size we need to talk about it. The other part that we, we talked about with the energy experts is that even if all 267,000 single family dwelling homes had PV systems, it's like, what is it, 10 to 15% of our total energy needs. The fact of the matter is we are spending three to six billion dollars every single year, depending on the fluctuating price of oil, to import over 40 million barrels of oil. And so that's the, that's the nut we have to crack. And but turning off any diesel power. The cable is not shutting down any diesel power over the long It's just adding more. It's not. It's not shutting down any diesel in a long Our cable is the one that they want to put. We got out the map of the state of Hawaii and how it lays upon the ocean. We're very aware of Governor Abercrombie's desire to connect the cable with the big island. But there is no reason that that cable has to go down this channel where we birth the whales. It can go on the far side. And as a matter of fact, if you look at the deaths and the problems that would be caused is far less, the cable is going to cost far less. Why? Why are we sacrificing two of our islands we can connect with Maui with less disruption than what it, you know what you're talking about. We looked at the bigger plan. You want geothermal? Fine. I think that's great. Okay? But go on the far side of Lanai. Do not sacrifice the channel. Why why haven't the cost of um, the current uh, electric generation uh, be levelized uh, as of today? Why do, why do we pay the highest rates um, mm -hmm. uh, in the state today? That's the question. Well, why, why isn't it uh, levelized throughout the whole state as it is? We pay taxes too, as well. Yeah. Um, so, can you ask that question? Uh, well, just, because we actually uh, four utility companies, Nico, they're all separate grids, they all have different rates. Go ahead. But where the question to me is still appropriate is, is why does Lanai and Molokai have their own separate rates? They're treating you like your own utility. Right. Why doesn't that change now? In that, in that area, it's a big As question. Is. You, you really should be levelized with uh, Nico. No. Yeah. I think so now. Yeah. In also, instead of giving the subsidies to large corporations, wouldn't it be better to subsidize all the homeowners in terms of the solar, so that it's decentralized and it's we've got smaller, smaller power plants that so, that provide energy to the communities that they're in, and Hiko needs to upgrade all its equipment so it can take on more uh, energy from from people's roofs and distribute it. The distribution system is so antiquated that. They, they say they can't handle it. Mm -hmm. So that's where they need to put the money in. You know, if the government's gonna give money away, our taxpayers' money away, put it in some place where we can then make use of it ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. The 
the other thing in response to what you said about the generation of the electricity and the capacity if we put in solar roofs on everybody's home and the level of usage. We here on Molokai have learned to live within our means. Okay? We are committed to live within the energy needs of this island. You need to take home to Oahu the message, live within your means. Don't sacrifice us because you haven't learned how to live within your means. Can I say something to you? Anytime you have current in the ocean, this is what caused a lot of the big animals out there to beach themselves because they lose their sauna. So you put cables in there, they will lose their sauna and they will lose it. They'll be beaching themselves all over the place. Okay, how do we protect these whales and stop the ocean? Don't put anything in the ocean like that. Yeah. Don't do it because you're going to have a lot of problems, I'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah. And, Including and the tourists not coming. And that's something, too, I was going to bring up because. Um, you know, it's a well-known fact, all of the huge power grids on the mainland where they have, um, they have uh, miles upon miles from, from one end of the states to the other of these huge lines going through. They've shown, not only does it disrupt electrical stuff and things like that, but it's also causing cancers, yes. you know? If you, live under, if you live underneath one of those wires, or within a close proximity, your body is being constantly bombarded. And that's what's going to happen in the ocean. Same thing. So we're so it's a long-term effect that we don't even know what we're letting out of Pandora's box on, on that regard. Plus the fact that, that the generation of it out here might also have effect on the people who live close by and the vibrational quality somebody brought up about that too. It does affect our bodies. Our bodies are run on electricity too. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to, we are out of time. I wish we yeah. could stay longer. We're gonna be moving on to uh, Kamakakai. If you have further comments that you would like to make, please uh, email us. Uh, well, I'm gonna say, what about those of us that don't have email? What about those of us that are not connected to the internet? You can call us. Okay. You can write us a letter. Called, and I do. Okay. I do. That's good. <laughs> but I was just going I to mention that only two, only two people in Vermont were hired by, you know, to do the maintenance. I mean, we're to, we, we didn't cover the issue about jobs because there's always, oh, well, you're going to bring jobs right. in. It's going to be good. They're going to bring their own guys yeah. in. They, bring, they have to bring their own guys in because they were the ones who made it and they know how it operates and, and they will not hire locally. Con there's contractors who have union people working for them. They can't be. Uh, government oh, money and not pay a union.